If you need to organize some sort of a process that requires approvals, then you don't want to miss this video. I'm going to be going through the system that we built to track our daughter's chores. But this very system can be applied to practically any business scenario where you have some sort of approval process. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help businesses to organize and automate their systems and processes. If that's of interest to you and you want to learn more about how we do that, swing by our website and also be sure to check out our free crash course that will go through the steps of getting up to speed in Airtable quickly. But without further ado, let's jump into the purpose of this video, and it is to review our chore process, our chore database uh, inside of Airtable and Zapier. So jumping into my screen, you're going to see that we have four different tables here in Airtable. We've got our chores, our chore submission, our chore detail, and our payout. Now, you may uh, be aware that we posted a video about tracking allowance and doing these chores in the past. This is an upgraded version uh, that we've made some pretty cool enhancements to. So the first table, you know, you see just the different chores that we offer now, or not offer, but that we require. And each chore has a value. And the value is based on how much our daughter loses if she does not complete that chore. So we use what we call a regression model for chores. Every week she gets a possible $12.50. And every time she misses a chore, depending on its value, that amount is going to get pulled from her earnings. So we have our chores listed out. If we wanted to have a description, we could list that here. And of course, we also see what days those are uh, due on. All of these chores for the most part are daily with the exception of school related chores. And then this chores table is going to link to the chore detail. Now the chore detail, I'll just jump ahead to that, is actually a junction table between chores and chore submission. So what that means is that each of these records is a unique instance between a particular submission and a particular chore. So this record or this row represents the submission from uh, March 8th that is in relation to the having a good attitude chore. This particular record is the same submission, so it's the same day, right? But it's a different chore. Now, so each of these is unique and we can track them and review them at a granular level for each chore. So we have both our child's submission, what she says that she did, whether she did or did not do a chore. But the one that really matters, of course, is whether we as parents agree that she did or did not do that chore. And so this is the part where we as parents get to come in and say, yes, that was complete or no, that was incomplete. In the case where it's incomplete, of course, she's losing some money, as I mentioned, on you know what would be that total amount for the week. All right. So as I mentioned, then these submissions or rather these chore details all list to a submission and they are linked to a submission. So each submission happens only one time, but then relates to multiple chore details. So if I were to open that up and kind of show that, you know, you've got seven different chore details linked to each one, each submission. And then of course, each chore submission is going to link to a payout. So at the highest level, we've got a payout, which is going to consist of a week's worth of chore submissions. And then each chore submission then connects to another seven you know, different chores, right, the, in the detail. And so then the payout table is a link of multiple chore submissions. And then we built an automated system to support this whole thing. So because I want to you know, keep this video uh, relatively short, I'm going to go pretty quickly about how the different automations are built uh, without going into super detail, but really just kind of painting a high picture or high level picture on what is going on here. So the first thing is we create a new payout. And if you remember, let's flip back to our payout. The payout is really going to have a start date and an end date, and it's a week in duration. And then over time, we're going to link different submissions to that payout. We also know that each payout is going to start with a possible 1250. And then as money is lost because chores are missed, then we are able to subtract that from the total and come up with an amount due. All right. So then this automation, the first step is that every week, based on the date and time. So every Friday at noon, a new chore payout is going to be created. So a new record will be created here and it's going to be given a start date and end date for the week in question. All right. So that's really step one. 
Now step two, uh, the second automation, is our daughter gets an, a text every night that includes a link to a form. And so inside of her text message, she can click on the form from her cell phone and it opens up the form that looks like this. And she has to go in on all, all these forms and then mark what she's done or not done. Once she submits that form, that takes us to step three. Step three is gonna capture all that form data and it's going to create the corresponding records in Airtable. So it'll create the chore submission, but it will also create the chore detail for each of those different questions that she answered, right? And then once that is done, uh, well, rather at the, la the last part of that is a text message then goes out to us as parents that says, hey, hold on, uh, there is a new submission to review. Then as parents, we go in and we look at her response, like here on the left, and we determine if we agree with that or not. Now, once we have done our parental review, inside of Airtable, we have a table that's showing us, or rather a field, that's showing us how many details still need review. Now, in this case, you'll see that they're all zero. But let me flip back into chore detail for just a moment, and I'll remove this one. Let's suppose we had not yet reviewed that chore on March 8th. Well, in that case, you would see then back here that we still have something that's needed for review. And you see it's turned red to show us that, hey, something's not right here, it still needs review. So this is the way that we're able to then set forth the next automation. So only when all of those uh, connected fields have been reviewed, as in this case now, then that is what sets our fourth uh, automation into play. And then what we're doing is we're updating that payout information. So when this, you know, this uh, chore submission right here, let's take this one for an example, uh, March 8th, when it's originally created, it won't have the link here. Only after it has uh, gone through the review process, then does it get linked to the proper payout. And we're able to perform that lookup because we know what the end date for this period is. And so we're able to look up and find the period that ends with that date that matches that and connect these two records together. So that's step four. And then finally, step five. Whew, all right, um, I'm, already, I'm already confused. In step five, uh, then the last step here is that once we have seven submissions connected here, which is a completed week, right, that have all been reviewed, then and only then does step five go into play and step five sends out two text messages, one to the parents that says, hey, the week is done, here's how much she lost and this is how much is due, right? So if that text were to be sent right now, it would say $8 is due. Uh, and then the other text message goes to our daughter and it also includes a link to the chore detail because the ultimate goal here is to make sure that she can go back and improve over time. So then we have created a reviewed chores here that are uh, you know ranked by date. And so she has in that last text message the ability to look at this and to see what the parents reviewed on her submissions and uh, see where she missed you know opportunities and exactly why, especially if we left notes in here. So I realize that that's a relatively convoluted process. But the exciting thing is that this is what we've done for chores. I'm sure you can imagine, you know, twice, three times, five times as many business use cases using the same kind of methodology that we put together here. So anything that requires any kind of back and forth between, you know, a, a boss and an employee or something of that nature is really just perfect for this kind of a scenario. So I hope you found that to be super useful and definitely let me know what questions from here you might have. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.